First of all, El Niño, when we talk about El Niño, we refer to a very complex interaction between the atmosphere and the ocean. In particular, we see a very strong signal over the equatorial Pacific. And uh, during El Niño, you see a weakening of the trade winds. And as a result, you get warm water from the ocean, which is coming closer to the coast of South America. But the impact is not localized to the eastern equatorial Pacific. It has global impact. You see impact over Southern Africa, over, of course, the whole of South America. Uh, it has an impact on the monsoon, and uh, Indonesia is suffering from extreme drought and so on. No two El Niños are the same. Um, in, uh, the, in the 20th century, they, they were two very strong El Niño, 8023, and it was referred as the El Niño of the century. Then 97, 98 was even stronger, and it was referred as the new El Niño of the century. Now, this one, it's difficult to say whether it is the strongest or not, because uh, since they are all different, but it's only one of the three strongest El Niño, El Niños over the last 50 years. And they Therefore, that's why it's so important, because the impacts are very strong. You see the drought and therefore the impact on food security in the southern part of Africa. You could see the enormous uh, fires with smoke, with health hazards in Indonesia and surrounding countries, and, uh, and, and so on. So it is really uh, not a localized phenomenon. It, it is a global one. El Niño has a number of effects. Uh, one of the effects is, for example, the warming of the uh, ocean near the uh, Pacific coast of South America, and that has an impact on fisheries. It has an impact, actually, it has an impact also on the birds feeding on the fishes, and it's, you see the, the domino effect. But for agriculture, it is also um, very um, much affected by El Niño because some part of the world are suffering from droughts, and drought, uh, as you know, many crops are very much uh, dependent on the, on the rainfall. But some other parts of the world, it can be floods, and floods can also uh, affect uh, food, uh, food security. The peak of the El Niño is probably over, and now we see a, a decline in the El Niño condition going back towards neutral condition and we have to watch but um, a number of models suggest that after the El Niño there could be a La Niña but one is to be still careful at this stage with this with this evolution so that's for the um, for the phenomena itself but the impact will be felt uh, for a very long time for many reasons for example if the crops if uh, the crops were used just for um, people to feed, because in, a, in this situation people were suffering from a, a very strong food insecurity. Uh, the, the seeds will not be available for uh, planting before the next uh, growing, uh, growing seasons. Uh, many um, uh, people had to slaughter their cattle and therefore you don't replace overnight. It will take uh, quite some time before you, uh, before you see a, a recovery. Also, children who suffered from malnutrition, uh, the World Health Organization will tell you that they may be affected for a very long time. Actually, some of them all their life, they may suffer from consequences from this uh, malnutrition. So you see the consequences are not just confined to the, uh, to the few uh, months during uh, around the peak of the El Nino, but they may be felt for a long time afterwards.